In this video, we're covering something every liquidity provider needs to understand, impermanent loss. If you've ever seen your liquidity pool position worth less if you just hold tokens, this is why. It's not a bug, it's a feature of how AMMs work. Let's break it down so you can manage the risk and earn with confidence. Welcome back to the DeFi 101 course. This course is made with support from the Solana Foundation and is designed to take you from a crypto investor to a crypto user. You can find a link to the full course playlist as well as supplementary written materials in the description. Now, let's get into it. First, what is impermanent loss? Impermanent loss happens when the price of two tokens in the liquidity pool change relative to each other. Because automated market makers like Orca and Radium use formulas to keep token ratios balanced, you'll end up holding a different mix of tokens than you put in. Even if you made fees, your position could theoretically be worth less than if you had held. In fact, when you're providing liquidity, you're essentially betting that the fees and incentives you receive from providing liquidity will be worth more than the impermanent loss that you suffer from price changes. Here's an analogy. It's like you're trading apples and oranges every time the price of one of them shifts. So many trades happen that you end up with more apples and fewer oranges than you started with, and a worse overall deal than if you'd held onto both. And why does it matter? If you're providing liquidity without understanding impermanent loss, you might think you're earning yield when you're actually losing value. All right, now let's talk about how impermanent loss works. Most Solana automated market makers use something called a constant product formula, X times Y equals K. This means that as the price of one token rises, you must hold less of it and more of the other to keep the product constant. Let's go through an example. Say the price of Sol is $100. Your total position is then worth $200. If Sol jumps to $150, arbitrage traders will buy Sol from the pool and sell USDC into it. Now the pool holds less Sol and more USDC. If you had held the USDC and Sol separately, the price of your soul would have gone from $100 to $150, and you would have $250. However, because of impermanent loss, now you would end up with less than $250, even though the price of soul went up. You still earn trading fees, but your token ratio got rebalanced in a way that drags down your return. This is impermanent loss. Impermanent loss is most severe when prices diverge sharply. If tokens stay near the same value, impermanent loss is minimal, but as price ratio skews, loss grows. For example, if price changes by 1.25x, impermanent loss is 0.6%. But if price changes by 5x, suddenly impermanent loss jumps to over 25%. It's called impermanent because the loss will reverse if prices return to the original ratio. But in practice, most traders are not waiting around for a reversion that may never come. That loss becomes permanent when you withdraw from the pool. Let's say you deposit $1,000 into a sole USDC liquidity pool on Orca. You provide 25 sole at $20 each and $500 USDC at $1 each. Now the price of sole doubles. It jumps from $20 to $40. Arbitrage traders rebalance the pool and your position now holds fewer sole and more USDC due to the constant product formula. After the price change, your LP tokens are now worth $1,414.22. But if you had just held your tokens, you'd have $1,500. That's a loss of $85.78 from impermanent loss. But let's say you earned $30 in trading fees, which offsets the loss a bit. Your final value is $1,444.22. Still a loss of $55 compared to what you could have had if you had just held the tokens in the first place. This is the risk of impermanent loss. Even when trading fees are high, price divergence can outpace them. But imagine if price went sideways. Those same $30 in fees might have meant real profit. Here are a few ways you can reduce impermanent loss risk. First, choose correlated pairs. For example, two stable coins like USDC and USDT or liquid staking pairs like like Jito, Sol, and Sol, will experience minimal divergence. One powerful tool to find correlated pairs is DeFi Llama's correlation matrix. You can also use concentrated liquidity. These allow you to choose price ranges. Narrower ranges mean higher yield, but more impermanent loss if price moves outside of it. Third, time your exit. If you suspect prices may converge again, hold your position to reduce impermanent loss. Finally, evaluate total fees. Always compare liquidity pool fees and incentives versus impermanent loss because even with IL, you could still end up positive. Impermanent loss is just one of several risks in providing DeFi liquidity. Others include volatility, more price divergence means more IL, lower volume, fewer fees to offset loss, rug pulls or smart contract bugs that can see your funds evaporated in an instant, as well as DPEGs in pools like USDC, USDT, or MSOL, GDOSOL. To keep on top of all of this, you should monitor things like price ratio trends, volume to TVL ratios, net APR, that's the incentives plus fees 
minus IL. If you're not tracking IL, you're flying blind. Tools like DeFi Llama, the decks you provide liquidity on, and portfolio trackers with liquidity pool breakdowns can help you do that. Now you know what impermanent loss is, how it works, and how to manage it. It's not something to fear or a reason to avoid DeFi entirely, but it is something to respect. You're one step closer to being a smart on-chain participant, not just a passive holder. If you want to keep learning, check out newsletter.dynamodefi.com for regular updates. Like and subscribe for more DeFi 101 on Solana, and watch the next video to deepen your edge.